So we're back at uh, ThingsCon 2016 in, in Amsterdam with a, uh, an, a new guest. Uh, so uh, who are you and uh, what do you do? Hi, uh, I'm Simon. Um, I am one of the original ThingsCon crew. So together with Peter, Max and Emmanuel, we started ThingsCon, I think about almost three years ago in Berlin. And um, I also did a little session here yesterday on the ThingsCon lab. So. Okay, so what, what, is the, what is the ThingsCon lab? Uh, the ThingsCon Lab is a, as we call it, uh, I think, open academic or semi-academic endeavor to further explore, um, I think, the broader range of the topics that we're looking at here. So um, ThingsCon puts forward this, um, I think, the vision to promote and foster a, I think, human-centric and responsible IoT. And to do so, uh, one of the things we really have to find out is what does that actually mean? So what is a human-centric IoT? Um, I think the idea is it's more than just a user-centric IoT and also what does responsible mean in what um, specific context. And ThingsCon Lab um, is an endeavor to do so really with uh, academic, uh, academic means. So we're teaming up with universities and research institutions um, across Europe, um, employing um, research tracks, we're teaming up with their actual courses. Yesterday we had some students um, and professors uh, on there and uh, the whole idea is to, to explore, to generate knowledge, to share knowledge, um, open accessibility to the academic community as well. So, Because you already had some great uh, questions yourselves, because uh, what is uh, human-centric and what is, uh, so, so obviously you're still exploring uh, the, 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 the answers, yeah, but, but do, you, do you have some sort of an idea of a, of a direction uh, things are developing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, uh, I think an important distinction is uh, human-centric and user-centric. User-centric, um, thank God, I think is something that is a given for many, many designers, especially those we find here. Um, I think we all share an implicit idea about what we mean by human-centric. Um, I mean, if you look at the Just Things Foundation um, and the many other projects here, I think we all share a mutual understanding um, of what values we want to put first. But the idea is to make this really um, explicit. So human-centric, as I said, can mean um, looking at other stakeholders that can be involved, uh, not just the user, uh, maybe the production and value creation chain, uh, maybe the producer, maybe the context of where the product is used, um, especially, uh, but not only, if it comes to public settings and cities. I don't know if a citizen is by definition a user, but he's definitely a human and therefore definitely a stakeholder of any kind of smart or connected city um, application. So. Uh, the idea is really to take a step back and see this as a broad, uh, holistic um, perspective on, on technology and society, I guess. So it's, it's fairly ambitious. So of, this, of course, we're looking for tiny and specific questions to dive into. Uh, again, something that we discussed yesterday at the session. But um, so I think the whole idea is to use this things gone lab as kind of a knowledge center and production hub um, that can cross feed into other um, kind of projects and endeavors that are connected to things come. Now, one could argue that that, uh, that human-centric design is, is not exclusive for, for IoT. So, so what, what, what is specific in, in, in the ThingsCon uh, um, organization? What is specific IoT in your research? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, again, a discussion um, that we had definitely yesterday, again today. Um, I think it's it's getting... And this is one of the points. It's getting more and more hard to um, to draw the line between is this a connected technology? Is this an Internet of Things technology? Is it just a technology? Um, my feeling is, uh, which I like, people are not too much occupied with definitions here, um, but just say, well, it's obviously a new kind of and a new approach in building technologies. Um, that have a strong and very deeply rooted impact in our lives. So, uh, as you can see, I shy away a little bit from the definition of what is IoT and what is not, because I think to me um, it just doesn't matter as much as in what can technology do to empower us, to help us kind of um, really uh, solve the problems that we might have, um, make um, connecting between other people more efficient and I think all those questions also yesterday we talked about um, uh, ambient and intelligent environments this to me sounds um, more rewarding than answering the definition game of what is IOT what is connected what is not really connected but might be connected um, I think that's not really um, the focus and I like that actually 
I also talked to some other people today, and uh, one of the things that uh, we we discussed was uh, the fact that it's it's uh, it's necessary to have other fields and other disciplines uh, uh, like sociologists or, or uh, anthropo- anthropologists or other kind of uh, um, scientific fields to, to to join the discussion and debate on that, uh, uh, well, maybe human-centric design. Is, is that what you actually do? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm not a designer. I'm not even a computer, computer scientist or anything myself. Um, so, I so what are you? <laughs> um Something in between sociologists, uh, so I'm, uh, my background is in culture and political science, sociology, uh, these days even philosophy and economics, so um, a very broad range, I think, of, of, of subjects. Um, and I think that is, again, something that uh, we very much embrace, uh, to have the practitioners here, but also to have um, people that kind of look on this from different perspectives. Like last year, things gone in Berlin, uh, with Bruce Sterling and, and Warren Ellis, we had like really authors and writers and, and artists um, that really employ a completely different lens on the, the technolo- uh, technological world that we are kind of talking about here. And I think this is very, very helpful and very necessary to, to get out of the tech bubble of just talking about new protocols and standards. Because again, I don't really think that is what matters. It's more the, the point and the value that we want to create with it. True, and there's much to learn from from fields of expertise that have been around for ages, uh, uh, like how people interact with each other, how people uh, um, work together in, in groups, uh, things like transparency and trust and, and, and other issues. Um, yeah, just today, we uh, I think in a session earlier today with um, Usman Haag um, and, and others, uh, we talked about, um, I think the session was called Smart Citizens, um, but that quickly um, the discussion involved or evolved into a general perspective, I think, on, on society. As some, someone even asked, like, what is the new form of new democracy that we're talking about here? So uh, implicitly, many big questions are involved in, in what we're doing or what we're talking about here. Um, one thing that I uh, remember right now was the, um, the, the connection between t- privacy and privacy rights on the one hand and then someone else um, spoke about um, the role of equality and anonymity to, to make an actual democracy happen. So I think just by kind of um, poking in there a little bit quickly, you can get to one of the big, uh, like all of the big questions um, that we're looking at uh, today. So I completely agree. Um, many of the, the big trajectories are uh, often uh, good to be discussed in like even the technological and tiny products and user privacy laws or something um, that we look at here. Now you've been around because you're co-founder of this organization, uh, so you've been around for, for uh, the last few, what is it, three, four years. Um, and what, what have you, what has changed during the, the last few years? Um, well, ThingsCon came about, I think, as kind of um, an interesting take on how can we learn more about the field that we are all working in. So um, back then I was still working uh, in my own startup, um, which was kind of a collaborating platform for hardware designers, kind of a GitHub for hardware. Um, together with my co-founder, um, we kind of teamed up with uh, Peter Beer and Max Kruger, um, who also have been in this field. And we were kind of, I think, asking ourselves um, similar or um, yeah, similar questions. And we figured, well, instead of just looking in the internet and just knowing these people on Twitter and maybe uh, engaging in these discussions online, why don't we bring everyone in one room and just like talk about this? So back then, I think we had a strong focus on um, building hardware, um, on I think implicitly, again, this kind of human-centric point of view. um, And also we wanted to uh, see what Berlin can offer um, in terms of such a hardware uh, community. So uh, when we started this, this was, as I said, a, a tryout of what happens. And I think what, what thoroughly changed is that ThingsCon has um, become a true community effort by now. I mean, if you look around here, the whole conference um, has been organized by a local chapter of ThingsCon. Um, I mean, Amsterdam is a special case because I think it took like four months after ThingsCon Berlin for ThingsCon Amsterdam to happen for the first time, which was... Um, pretty impressive and, and great. So um, to answer your question, I think what changed is that 
the whole thing super rapidly became community owned and driven. So people just said, I, I wanted things gone in, in Milan, I want one in, in London, in, in Vienna, and they just made it happen. It, it was small meetups, uh, those uh, so-called salons, um, it was um, just people getting together and discussing and reflecting on their work. So I think by now, things gone, I wouldn't even call it a conference anymore. It's, it's, it's become a, a community, a network of people who happen to meet in events and, co in, and conferences, but also as with ThinksCon Lab, but also as with the publication we're launching um, the coming year. Um, it's a lot about really uh, engaging in this dialogue and reflecting on, on what we're doing. And I think this is something that I maybe hope for, but I haven't envisioned like three years ago to just kind of be part of community. It's, I don't even feel like, um, I mean, I never felt like this, but I don't feel like I'm, I am one of the I'm still there are other chapters and it's just amazing to see how um, proactive this community is. And, and another thing that Marcel I think pointed out, which I also really like, is um, no one comes here to sell or pitch you anything for their own kind of agenda. It's I, I, I generally have the feeling people come here to learn and to reflect on what we're doing rather than like plugging, hey, so here's my strategy firm, and here's my new startup, and why don't you, I don't know. So um, I think this is also something that's very healthy for um, um, an industry to have this kind of safe space to re reflect upon what we're doing without the kind of business agenda uh, put first. Welcome. Wait a couple of years. They, they come. Um, I'm not saying there is no business agenda. I'm just saying the, the priorities in this space um, I think are very healthy because the business doesn't come first, um, but I think we all share the idea that if you come up with a human-centric and a, a meaningful product or solution that actually makes sense, the business agenda is kind of a given. Um, whereas, especially in the IoT, if you go the other way around and you think like there's a hype, there's a new trend, there's a new technology, um, there's immense danger of losing and kind of um, taking out all the other elements which are uh, what actually makes sense, what is actually the problem that we're solving, what um, what are the effects on our environment and our society. So I think if you answer these questions first, they're way harder to answer. Um, and if you answer them right for your product or for your service, um, business is just like that. So that follows. It's not given, but it's it's way um, more concrete and very easier for you then to, to build your business around them than the other way around. Thank you very much. Closing.